asking our Foreign Secretary, Ernest Bevin, to address this conference. platform four years ago from his sins and uh, made a speech on foreign affairs but I don't think I ever dreamt then that I'd be foreign secretary certainly uh, I had no intention but the uh, when the victory was won the Prime Minister selected me to take this job on may I call attention to the fact that in calculating how soon we could begin any kind of real international recovery which would enable problems like the previous speaker has been describing to really grapple with, I calculated that we should not have anything at all for my field of the world, the foreign field, economically, for at least two years. Far East, and I'll refer to this again later, we were uh, perhaps unduly optimistic that after the defeat of Japan, the re-establishment of China, the unification of China, we were... We began, first of all, by Indeed, prior to this breakdown, we'd begun with France and with Italy, with economic committees, but we had nothing or scarcely anything we could advance to them. With Belgium, Holland, Scandinavia, and what is now the Western powers, we tried our best. But you were held up with finance, the multilateral system completely broken down. The convertibility of the pound was smashed. Not because the convertibility when we entered into it was wrong, but because the, the uh, political and economic disturbances prevented it functioning in the manner we had originally intended. And when they denounce us now for entering into the convertibility arrangement, they are simply... Uh, denouncing the fact that the world was unable to agree and to create the conditions which we had hoped with all the suffering in the world everybody would cooperate to allow to function. In November 47, uh, it was pretty near uh, that, uh, well shall I put it, no higher than this that France and Italy and other countries was in grave danger. Now, I am a social democrat, and I don't, and I think this government is a social democratic government, and this party is a social democratic party. And uh, now, as the armies of these countries in the West had been, was completely gone is not going to attack anybody, then it isn't our against. The only time this pact can come into play is if there is an aggression. Now, fellow delegates and friends, there's going to be no aggression by us. <laughs> uh, but from the point of view of French opinion, assuming Germany again became 20, 30, 40 years' time, an aggressive nation. You never know. It may be one country today, another tomorrow, as indeed it happened between the two wars. But it's a permanent warning to any aggressor in Europe who think that aggression can pay and won't be resisted. And so, in France, in, Pro in Belgium, in the Italy, it gives a double, a double uh, assurance and security for them. Well, we began that one. At the time, somehow, this dictatorship thing, this veto business, this awful difficulty, uh, seems insurmountable. Uh, 
we can't sacrifice democracy. They apparently feel they can't sacrifice uh, unanimity and uh, sacrifice what is worse than unanimity, the individual right to objection. That is the individual right of objection. And then that individual right stands, notwithstanding the opinion of the rest. Now, really, you, it's very difficult in a democratic country to enter into a system like that. Therefore, I don't know what will happen. I don't see we can do any more than that. And if there's a possibility of consultation in economic or other matters of common concern in order that we might assist each other in any way without involving us in the committal of our party and our country to these principles which are, we can't really swallow, then uh, possibly there again. We may emerge in an unwritten way while we're unable to agree on the written way. And uh, I must go back and see what can be done. With the whole of the Americas now in the Rio Convention and in the Atlantic Pact, so that the whole of the Americas, North and South, is now united on a common policy insofar as aggression is concerned. The British Commonwealth, with this enormous population, the world can have an assurance that peace between them is indivisible too. And whether it's Australia, New Zealand, or India, Ceylon, Pakistan, or the great territories of Africa, or South Africa, there is a common acceptance now on this question of aggression and on the maintenance of peace. Now that's a very wide area of the world. For the uh, very, very cordial and loyal support you gave me in the days when I couldn't tell you. In the first two or three years of this policy, negotiated with other people, tied to secrecy in many cases, great problems to be overcome, suspicions to be removed. A foreign secretary can't go out on the platform with the same liberty you can at home. Whoever does it will find it, will find that difficulty exists. But I'm surreal. going along very patiently. We are hearing a lot of speeches, a lot of discussion, and uh, something may e emerge yet. But all I'd like to...